first game. Aruna to serve. Love all. Interesting moment there for Aruna Kodri being able to do well at that particular competition in Rwanda. IT Tape Africa, welcome you on the show. This is this for on Trust TV, um, Adeni uh, G. Shafe. Well, we run through some stories in the world of sports. We're talking about Aruna Kodri right now, the presidency. Appreciating what he has done, being able to win that competition. After seven years, he last won it, and right now he's back to his feet. Talking about Aruna Kodri. Well, let's look at that story. The presidency congratulates Aruna Kodri on ITTF African Cup victory. He did so well, defeating Egyptian Mohamed El Biali there in that particular game to win 4 0. And right now, Nigerians are celebrating for what he has done. Also, he did so well in Saudi Arabia, smash. And right now, Aruna Kodri has been the man of the moment, doing so well, winning about 4,000. US dollars in that particular encounter there. Well, right now he's being appreciated for what he has done and really he has really shown his class when it comes to playing the ping pong sport of table tennis. And the good thing is that he will be going to the Olympics and Nigerians are rooting for the man to see how we do well there. You saw that particular clip almost non-stop where the game was seriously very tough between himself and the Egyptian. Join us to talk for this our gentleman from Kaduna and also Lokoja. We have from Lokoja Mad Emmanuel. Good to have you. Okay, and also we have Joseph Peter from Kaduna. Good to have you, Joseph. Good morning, sir. Good to have you. Okay, so let's uh, start with that particular story. Well, right now, for the fact that Arna Kodri did well in that encounter, winning that game against Mohamed El Biali, uh, the presidency has been actually congratulated him for what he has done. And really, he deserved that particular colleague calling from the federal government of Nigeria. Joseph Peter, you want to agree with me that Arna Kodri really deserved that particular accolade? Aruna Kodri has been a serial and a perpetual winner ever since uh, he, he came into the limelight of, uh, of table tennis. And he deserves every good thing that comes his way. I mean, I'm so happy for him. If you look at it, you think other people must have fizzled away. If it were other persons, you probably see that they would fizzle away after seven years of not winning a particular competition, only to come back and still win that same competition. It really happens in sport, and I'm so happy for him. He deserves everything good that comes his way. Okay, a good one there. At least uh, Nigerians are celebrating the man of the moment, Aruna Quadri, being able to do well in Rwanda. Now, okay. well, talking about that particular uh, game, it was a tough one, but he was able to win all the session 4 0. It ended in favor of our own star man, Amad Emmanuel. <laughs> welcoming you on the show. Uh, let's have you concerning Aruna Quadri. Okay, Ahmad Emmanuel, maybe you need to unmute, you need to unmute yourself just so that we can hear you. Okay, so right away, uh, let's just continue with uh, Joseph Peter while we're waiting for Ahmad Emmanuel to uh, get, us, uh, get us clear from the studio. Right now, talking about Aruna Kodri there, congrats to him for what he has done and also for being able uh, to win that particular competition. Seriously rooting for him at the Olympics now. Well... Uh, we move straight from, away from table tennis. Let's talk about uh, handball. We have the Adova Handball League taking place in Benin City, where teams are really jostling for honors there in both the men and women category. Adova Handball Premier League, Bende Dynamo's first victory excites Benin fans on day three. Uh, on day uh, the first day, they actually lost out, and it was uh, a painful one. But this time around, they were able to rally around, and they did so well on day three of the uh, Handball Premier League taking place in Benin City. Let's look at the result of the men, how it went down yesterday in Benin City right now. Having to look at that, Kando Pilas actually did well, but it wasn't good enough as they lost to Niger United 18-21. Rima Strikers won by Jersey Point against Correction Boys. It was a tough one, but they delivered there in that game. The Marine Academy walkover Confluence Stars who did not show up for their own game, while the Defender, Civil Defense Team, won against the Adamawa Warriors 36-28 to actually win that particular encounter between them and Adamawa Warriors. Lagos Seasiders, they show why they are Seasiders. 31 points they score against Sunshine Kings of Akure, who scored 22 in that particular game, while Benu Buffaloes, Benu Buffaloes fought hard, but they lost against Safety Shooters, who are really very, very strong in this league so far. Uh, they've done so well so far in this competition. Now, if you look at how the table is, 
in the Adova Handball Premier League Day 3 for men. Safety shooters are back, uh, already talking again. They want to defend what they, uh, they actually won last time. Uh, shooters have uh, they've been able to have 9 points with a 46 goal difference. To get Marine Academy a second with the same uh, point with 31 goal difference. Niger United, Rima strikers in that affecting order. The defenders, correction boys, Lagos Seasiders, Candle Pillars, and uh, not forgetting Benue Buffaloes, Sunshine Kings, and Damara Warriors also making it uh, to at least standing top 11 there. Although for uh, Confluence their team, they are not uh, actually around to fight for honors in the male category of the Adova Handball Premier League match day three that we just unveiled there. Now, looking at the women category, let's look at the results of the women, how they also fought hard yesterday. Emo Grasshoppers, they play against Rivers Queens, who actually won that game 33 29. The Defender Babes, the women version of the Civil Defense uh, Handball team, who actually won against Flat 2 Peacocks, while you have Seasider Babes, they lost out against Safety Babes, who did well by extra 10 points to defeat uh, Cisada Babes there. Chief of Army Staff Babes, 21-34, it ended in favor of a uh, Sokoto women team called Rima Queens and Bender Dynamos. They did well. They defeated Delta Queens by a point, 23-22. Transferring it that straight down to how the table is standing after match day three, you have Seasider Babes are topping with uh, a nine point, followed by uh, the half for the six goal difference, and you have uh, Rima Queen standing second there with 15 points, uh, rather nine, eight points with 15 goal difference. Defender Babes standing third with 28 goal difference. Seasider Babes, Emo Grasshoppers, and you have uh, uh, Rivers Queens, Plateau Peacocks, Bender Dynamos, Delta Queens, and uh, Chivami Star Babes standing down the log there. Seasider Babes as number one, they're supposed to be safety babes anyway. That's an error. But uh, just to let you have a feel of the games that have been played so far in this competition, day three, this is the first phase of the handball league taking place in Benin City. Well, let's see if uh, we can have Ahmad back fully. Ahmad, you, uh, Emmanuel, are you there? Okay, uh, it seems uh, the audio is not working. Uh, something is wrong somewhere. Uh, well, let's have uh, uh, Joseph Peter. Uh, Joseph Peter, if you're there, let's have you. Yeah, um, um, uh, I've seen the, the whole uh, breakdown of the table and the results that have uh, been uh, uh, brought to, to, to happening. The thing is, um, uh, one thing with all this kind of uh, league, uh, one thing that makes me like it and appreciate it is because uh, it kind of uh, creates an avenue, a platform where you develop uh, that particular sport and ball in the country and you know make it go viral within the country and then it improves the national team, uh, put the various national teams and, and it's a welcome development and it's good to see that it's not just uh, you know um, isolated for men alone, it's also done or played for both uh, male and female which kind of uh, creates a, a kind of uh, an avenue whereby the, the both sides develop. So it, it's a welcome development, and I wish uh, those who are uh, engaging and participating in this uh, put male and female uh, competition well with it, and I hope that it, it, it improves and, and, and creates opportunity for a lot of youngsters to really uh, be brought to the limelight. Okay, talking about this particular competition, really, uh, it's always good to talk about uh, other sports because uh, essentially it's always on football. But now we've been able to talk about table tennis and also switch to handball. And like you mentioned, both the men and women are happy being able to play this particular competition, having that platform in Benin City where it's ongoing. This is the f uh, phase one. The phase two is also be will also be coming. And we just hope that this will also be replicated in other sports like basketball because for a while now, our basketball league has been on hold and that has not really helped our teams in fact, the, the human performance of uh, uh, River Zubasi surprised a lot of people how they were able to do it. It means they trade on their own without playing any competition. And really, something must be done concerning our basketball league. Well, Joseph Peters, you want to agree with me that uh, uh, other sports in Nigeria really need attention as we give 100% to football, especially Super Eagles. If we can just shelve little of it, maybe 10%, 20% to other sports, they will go places. We will really go places. And, you know, uh, talking about the handball, if, if they can come and put up a competition like this and be competitive at this level and, you know, give their all, even after not, you know, having uh, maybe semi-competitions and maybe mock competitions to support them uh, outside this particular competition, and yet they put out this performance, that tells you the level of, of, uh, of talent that is really existing in that side. 
And now, if we are able to spread all this into, you know, basketball and other sports, it will really do us well. It will, you know, kind of engage the youth, you know, and, and stop a lot of, uh, of of problems that are really, you know, present in our society these days. Where when youth are busy playing sports and they are happy, they are developing and they are going places, of course, everybody will pick one or two sports that he or she is good at and actually, you know, try to express themselves instead of, you know, becoming a nuisance to the society. So if that particular love that is being showed to football, maybe you said 10%, but I think 30% can be taken off or diverted to other uh, sides of sport and to really do our society well. Okay, good one. At least uh, Joseph Peter are making that particular point there. Let's see, try our man in Lokoja. Amadi Manu, are you still there? Okay, uh, seems uh, technically we're not getting it right here. Well, hopefully he will uh, actually stand by with us. And now let's talk about a man that really done well for himself. He got injured during the season and he came back and still able to do so well in that particular sport of soccer. We talk about uh, Victor Boniface. Let's look at that story. German Bundesliga Rookie of the Year. Victor Boniface wins award. He actually won Rookie of the Month for four times, August, September, October, November in 2023. And then uh, finally he has scooped the Bundesliga Rookie of the Season. Uh, they call him King of the Rookie <laughs> or Rookie King. And some journalists actually uh, cut out for him today. But good one for uh, Boniface for being able to scoop this award as the Rookie of the Season, despite being injured for a long time. But he was able to come back and made a good name for himself. Joseph Peter, you see uh, Victor Boniface uh, for the fact that he had like a break during the season. Maybe if he had come, uh, had his, a straight uh, season, who knows? Maybe he actually won uh, the top score out there about. But really, we appreciate the fact that uh, Bundesliga, all the voters did everything possible to make sure the Nigerians scoop this particular award. For a Nigerian to scoop this award is a big deal because we all know how the German league can be and how their voting system can be. However, he, if, if he had been available all season, then maybe he would have even gotten a, what is better than a rookie award. Mm. Rookie means this is his first time in the league and he, he, really do, he really did well. I mean, to be a striker, come into a league, blend with the play and the tempo of that particular league and actually score seven goals and provide assists, then go maybe the, his injury you know, was, absent for, was absent for a very, very long time. And then he still got back, and when he got back, scored a goal and gave an assist. And he has been doing very, very well, you know, subsequently after that. It, 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 it's really, really a great thing for him, and I hope he builds on this going into next season. Since he didn't need any learning to do, I, I believe that next season, which way he's going to, you know, uh, 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 participate in both the league and the Champions League. I hope he really does well for himself and goes from Bayern Leverkusen to a more elite club. And hopefully, like I like to say, the Super League will get to benefit from all this prowess. Now, talking about the Super Eagles now, looking at Victor Boniface doing so well, hopefully next season, we just hope that uh, he'll be able to add more sparks to the qualifiers. Victor Boniface, with his strength and pacey uh, form, he will add a lot to the likes of uh, Victor Steme at the front there. Well, for Victor Boniface, for what he has done, he actually contested that particular award against four other players like Xavi, Beria, Maximilian, and he was able to win it via vote. Congrats to Victor Boniface, who really has really done well for himself after moving from Union St. Gloat in Belgium straight down to Germany to play for Bayern Leverkusen. And that team, they won the German Bundesliga, breaking record all around, 50 unbeaten <laughs> record matches that they play. And now they hold that record against all other clubs in the world for being able to play 50 times without being uh, defeated. Aside that, they are still going for two more cups. Who knows? Maybe they will get it. Uh, DFB Poker is there. And also, they are going for the Europa. Uh, well, all those coming the way of uh, Victor Boniface of Nigeria. Now, we move away from Germany, talking about Victor Boniface. Let's go straight to Ghana and talk about our under-17 players who will be playing at the Wafu B under-17 company that will be coming up today, starting from today. Wafu B under-17, uh, Nigeria basketball, Kina Faso in Ghana. Well, from the way it is right now, our boys are about to ready. According to their coach, Manu Garba, uh, he says that they are really ready for this game. They will be facing Burkina Faso. The young glass, if you look at their faces, really shows they are really under 17 this time around. Uh, they are being cleared by a calf. Joseph Peter. 
Yeah, it's nice to see young lads being taken to competition right? that is meant for young lads, unlike how we used to be before. You and I know how we used to be before. But really, this competition is all about, uh, I think, preparation. If, if they prepare well, then obviously <clears throat> they will do well. But, you know, looking at the coach, Manu Garba, and how far he has gone, how long he has been with them, you expect them to actually take the maximum point, seeing that the game is not even played in Ghana, it's been played in Burkina Faso. So hopefully, uh, uh, um, they, they, they get the maximum point. That's what I expect, and I hope that they prepare well. Because when it comes to age grade competition, uh, aside the experience, which is usually lacking, uh, the, the, the preparation is very, very important. Mm. Well, really, we wish our team the best under 17. Manu Garba already uh, promising a lot of uh, goals there. But really, we know it's going to be tough, uh, being the fact that uh, we're able to win in last time. And this is a qualifier to the Africa under 17. If we're able to conquer West Africa, we go Africa. And also, who knows, uh, the world all level too, because we've done it five times. And Nigerians can't wait to see us doing so well again for the fact that a lot of talents have been discovered in this under 17. And we are still hoping that... This, uh, this time around, our under-17 team will also do us proud in Ghana as a fight out against Burkina Faso today. What a night in the Premier League. There are English Premier League matches that were played. And you saw the likes of Chelsea being able to do well yesterday against Brighton. And also Manchester United showing their class against uh, Newcastle United. Well, it ended 2-1 in favor of the Blues. Almost. <laughs> they almost blew it. And you have Manchester United. They were able to win against Newcastle. What they couldn't do against Arsenal, they did against Newcastle. 3 2 5 goals trailer in that particular encounter there. Talking about this game, Brighton. They've been able to cement their place ahead of Manchester United, which is the only trophy they've won this day, to, you know, cement a place ahead of Manchester United and they're celebrating it. I'm happy that they are back of the, you know, the position of uh, being, uh, being 11th and 10th on the table and they've done better, they've improved, which means that Pochettino has actually, you know, improved the team. That's something that needed to be commended. So if you look at their previous performances, the previous two seasons, you would agree with me that they've been really, really below par. But to have come up and, you know, to be able to fight for a certain European competition is actually an, an, improve, an improvement on, on Chelsea's side, and I'm happy for them. Now, crossing over to Manchester United and Newcastle, that was a game that, uh, well, a lot of Pondy were hoping that uh, Newcastle would actually be able to do it. But United came strong. It's happening over there at Old Trafford, and, uh, you know, they needed to win a game, at least this game, which is, you know, kind of more competitive than the rest of the game they have left uh, on, on card. And they needed to, to win this game to, you know, boost it, to give their fans something to take home for the season. And I'm glad that they were able to do that. The young minor once again proving to be the one to carry, you know, United on his shoulder after the, you know, the, the, the form of uh, Rashford. And I'm happy for him and I hope that, you know, the United team gets built around the, the, that young lad who has really proven to be a, a, a very, very good talent and a very, very good prospect. Now, talking about Man United, uh, Chelsea, uh, uh, Brighton also, uh, Newcastle United. Let's look at how the table is standing after they play those games. It's getting more interesting. In fact, Premier League remains the only league <laughs> that have not been won so far this season. It's a tough one. Man City are still there. Yes, they are hanging on as the top most team in the EPL. Arsenal, Liverpool, Aston Villa. But after that matches, uh, those matches yesterday, United are standing eight. Newcastle are still uh, top with uh, uh, on goal difference of 21 they have the same point that's why it's always good to make it while the sun shine despite winning yesterday they are still not able to destroy newcastle united chelsea are now sixth they are now sixth on the log and it's a good one for them because uh, there is hope for europe uh, uh talking about uh, this particular table well ahmad let's try it again if we'll be lucky this time around ahmad Iman, are you there oh my goodness <laughs> Okay, Ahmad, I'm sure we'll be, we'll be having you in our subsequent edition. Uh, just hang on there. Okay, uh, Joseph Peter, if you look at that table, it's very, very competitive. We know that it's down to the wire, lax guy day match. But for Chelsea, no one saw that coming. They've always been on number 10, number 10. But this time around, they are standing sixth, even ahead of Man United, who earlier, or earlier on during, during the league, they were ahead. But now, Man United are eight, Chelsea are sixth on the log. Honestly, if you ask me how it happened, I cannot explain it. I just know that one day I was looking at the, the, <coughs> the table and then I just discovered that Chelsea are above my United. And I asked, how? How did that? And because I don't understand. <laughs> I tried to check, but it is actually real. 
I'm very, very happy for them. I hope that the Chelsea fans actually see this as a positive. Because, you know, to have been where they were for the past two, three years, is not really a good place to be. You know, you keep repeating uh, seasons and you are ending, you know, 11th, 10th and all that. And now you are, you know, on the 6th and even fighting for a, a European competition. Is that that they see this as a positive? And I, I really well, wish that uh, they, they, they do better as for, you know, to, in order to, you know, make the competitiveness of the Premier League even much more than it is right now. Well, a big one there talking about Chelsea being able to do a sixth position. It's like, in fact, they woke up from their slumber and they are doing so well right now. Uh, who knows? Maybe if they have like 10 matches to go, maybe they could have this Lord Manchester City <laughs> or Arsenal. Just uh, throw some banter there. <laughs> Chelsea fans will come for me this morning. Anyway, we look at the last draw <laughs> of the show. Coppa Italia, it was a tough one. Nigerians were hoping that Nigerian star Ademla Lukman will be able to do it, but they lost out. Let's look at that story. Coppa Italia, Juventus beat Atalanta to lift the trophy. Uh, they fought hard, but it was a tough one. As Juventus were able to beat Atalanta there. So painful for the Nigerian international Ademola uh, Lukman. So, so uh, painful for him because he was already eyeing that particular trophy uh, this season. Well, I still hope for him. Let's see what they'll be doing in their own uh, uh, competition, in the Europa competition there. Well, uh, Joseph, want to agree with me? Juventus was almost a mark to win this trophy. Yeah, everybody knew that they were the one who, on paper, was supposed to win this trophy. And they've won it a lot of times before. But if you see the game, you'll see that it wasn't really one-sided against uh, Atalanta. Atalanta created chances. They were just not lucky. Ademola Lukman even hit the post with one of his uh, left-footed shots, uh, and, and, and he almost got a goal, but it didn't really just work out for them. And if you look at the, you know, the goal margin, it's it just one goal difference, and you would know that uh, really it was, it was a tough win for for Juventus. The only thing that helped them was because they had uh, Dusan Vlahovic, who is very strong on the ground and who stood his ground even when he was dispossessed and was able to score that goal at the early uh, minutes of the game. So uh, kudos to them for winning something that they deserve it. And um, next time, I hope uh, Ademola Lukman is on the right side of the, of the team. Okay, big one there for Ademola Lukman. So painful that uh, his team couldn't uh, lift that particular try. But congrats to the Bianconeris. They call them Juventus. Old lady, they show their class. Maturity actually is now for nothing. Well, we just have to wrap it up there. Joseph Peter, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. And we thank uh, Amadi Man, even though we couldn't hear you, but uh, just uh, <laughs> we know that uh, in the evening, you are going to be joining us in the evening on Sports Update. Uh, just uh, at least uh, stay with us at least uh, by the time we run that one in the evening. Thank you so much, Amadi Man. Well, well, that's it on the show. 360 Sport on Trust TV, as we always say, sport is business and fitness. I'm Adeni Yi Thanks for watching.